Good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us. This morning we'll have a seven minute meditation using Bija Mantras for our Agya. And we'll recite the Lord's Prayer in English and then listen to the original language of Sri Jesus by listening to the same prayer in Aramaic. But first let's all bow down together. Raise our Kundalini 
and put ourselves into bandham.
We say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. talk this morning is um, a Christmas puja talk uh, from Ganapata Pule in India back in 1988 and this is just titled Transformation. I'm standing on the brink of the ocean, ocean of humanity, where we have to face the problems of human beings, otherwise in the nature there are no problems, they are also already solved. So one has to understand that it's not just a movement of few people, chosen people, just to achieve Self-realization. But it's a big revolution. 
which has to bring forth the beauties of human beings, the glories of human beings, the proof of divinity, of divine power and of God Almighty. We have to now face that multitude of people who are absolutely ignorant compared to you, who have not known the knowledge of God, who are either lost into the darkness of ignorance or are burning in the fire of ego. We have to transform this world into a new world, a beautiful world which you all are enjoying, to establish to be established on this earth, for which we have to prepare ourselves. So far Sahaja Yoga means blessings. If somebody is less blessed, they ask me questions, how is it, Mother, we haven't got this when we are praying to you? Why did it not work out? It should have happened. After all, we are worshipping you, so how is it that my son did not get the job. So, I mean, as if it's sort of a, some debts have to be paid to all the Sajogis by Sajoga. That sort of a attitude has been so far towards Sajog of, not all of you, I must say, but in the minds there's lurking always a desire to know why, when we are Sahaja Yogis, why should it happen to us. Now you see in that God has blessed you. Some people had very miserable married life. They couldn't understand why they had to have a miserable married life. Some had some misfortunes, and some had some diseases also after coming to surgery. So there has to be understanding that Sahaja Yoga is for correcting your life, for putting you on solid basis, on proper foundations, to make you great people, as if it gets you immune all these mishappenings, with blessings, of course. So you don't feel the effects of those misfortunes so much as you would normally feel. Thus creates beautiful human beings out of you. Some people have hankering after money. Some people think they can make money by coming to Sahaja Yoga. Some people think they will become leaders or some think they will have fame, some think that they will achieve a kind of a <clears throat> very dominant position, and some think that they can be fool me also. It's high time we realize that Sahaja Yoga is not for this. Sahaja Yoga is for making you the wisest person the sanest person, the most generous and the most confident person in the world, because you have to fight. You have to fight the dark ignorance of Kali Yuga, of ages which is precipitated and today we see all the bad effects of it. Whatever you may call it, you may call it the fanaticism, you may call it the uh, atheism, any isms of any kinds, and all these human projections which have created all those artificial webs have to be broken. But 
human beings on the whole believe that these artificial webs are real. So to break that, you have to be, be, also be careful that you don't break the human beings. While you are breaking their false faiths, you have to remember that those people who are carrying those false faiths are the ones who have to achieve Self-realization. It's a very delicate work, it's a very hard work, it's a very harsh work, but it is the most detached work. And when we realize that we are so important, that God has blessed us with this peace, with this understanding, with these powers, it's not only for our own gain, because God is not only for you, He is for the whole world. So we have to utilize them, we have to spread them, work it out at every level. We have to become dynamic about it. But the most important thing is the responsibility of Sahaja Yoga we have to take. We are Sahaja Yogis and we are responsible for Sahaja Yoga. What have we done for Sahaja Yoga? We looked after our family, our children, our jobs, our this, our that, motor cars, our horses, our dogs, our cats. But who is responsible for Sahaja Yoga? When it comes to that point, we are responsible for Sahaja Yoga. Then it works out. But there is a deliberate action also of the negative forces. And this negativity is acting through ignorant people who believe, who believe that they are right. They don't know what is waiting for their destruction there. Especially among our young people, you will find they just join any party, join any club, join any methods, any trend, anything, just because they have no understanding as to what they have to be. They have to be the Spirit. I asked the other day a president of a young organization, what is your policy? He said, we have no policy. They started looking here and there and said, we have no policy. I was amazed that they have no policy. No, whatever our leaders say, we do it. So to get people out of this kind of slavery that they have no brains of their own, they can't use their own understanding, they have to become the Spirit. Shivaji, who was a great Atma Sakshatkari, a realized soul. For the future he has given the message, he said, Swadharma Zagavava means enlighten your dharma of spirit. Swadharma, the spirit has to be enlightened. Everybody has said that. I am specially quoting him because he comes from Maharashtra, apart from that he was a political head. Though he was a political head, but because he was a realized soul, he said that your spirit should be awakened. He didn't talk of all other nonsensical things. And he knew that unless and until the spirit is awakened, people will be doing all kinds of wrong things. And that is why today we find all over the world the mess in which all political parties, all economic endeavors, all military endeavors have fallen into. So it is for us to take over and to show them what is an integrated life and what is the strength of a human being. Because the Shakti is within everyone. 
just praying to Shakti, just talking about Shakti, it doesn't act. But this divine Shakti has to act and act through you people. Just try to realize that within these few years how much knowledge you have got, how much you know, how deeply you know. You are not just passing slogans or talking, you know, but you know it. You know what it is. I don't think I have attended to each one of you individually, but through your spirit only you have come to know all the knowledge about yourself and the knowledge about others. You didn't have to go to any library, you didn't have to go to any university. All the saints never went. None of the saints went to any university or read any books, but how knowledgeable they were because they were the Spirit. So the first and foremost responsibility of a Sahaja Yogi on this day is to be the Spirit. On the day when we are celebrating the birthday of Christ, who was the Spirit. So this is our greatest responsibility first to see that are we the Spirit or we are this body, this mind, this ego, what are we? If you have achieved that state, if you have achieved that state, then you are, as they call in Marathi, samartha means you are equal to your name, that you are the Spirit. If you cannot achieve that, then you are a half-baked Sahaja Yogi, not yet done. As you know, we have no organizations, no memberships, nothing, but we have one thing that we know we are realized souls that we know more than all others know, and that we are not proud of it. We are very humble people. But this humility should not become a stagnation or a lethargy within us that now we are realized so, let us sit on a tree and have our blessings. You have to get to the roots and you all have to work it out on your level. But first get rid of your own personal problems, all petty things that you have. When we talk of sacrifice, as you know in Sahaja Yoga, I have not known what sacrifice people have done. You have to sacrifice your ego, which is a headache to you and to me. And you have to sacrifice your conditioning, only two things, left and right. And that can be achieved and many have achieved. But now put that detached personality to a test. And then once you are sure that you are detached, then employ your energy in doing constructive improvement of this whole world. It will work out for poverty, it will work out for politics, it will work out for economics, it will work out for every field of life. Sahaja Yoga is the only solution because in this human beings are transformed. It's not like this, that one person changes the address or the badge that he's wearing and he becomes something else, or from church to temple and temple to church. It's something within that transforms you, makes you knowledgeable, so you are already Satchidanand because you know the truth, you are in joy 
and your attention is enlightened. With all this that you have, what are we to do now? If you enlighten the light, it automatically knows that it has to give the light. In the same way, all the Sahaja Yogis have to take the responsibility for this great war we have started. It's not the war with souls or with atomic energies, because they are all destructive. This is the war against all the destructive powers through the power of love which is constructive, which constructs human beings, which constructs societies which constructs countries and the whole world. That is your own. And also this decision has to be your own. Even if I give big lectures and say things, it may not have any effect whatsoever on you. It might be just wasted. If you haven't got the capacity to imbibe what I am saying, so important, so imminent. Now give up all the worries you have about your small, small, little, little things of your family, of your work, your factories, of your business, of your official positions and just know that everything has to go through Sahaja Yoga. Even the cooking I do, I do it through Sahaja. If the fire is not working, just put your hands to the fire, it becomes all right. If the rice is not cooking, put your hands to the rice, it cooks. Anything going wrong anywhere, you can use your vibrations. But I don't know what to use to make you feel responsible for such. That now we've got such a great thing with us, and what are we going to do about it? I'm getting vibrations from you. That means you all have agreed to what I'm saying. May God bless you all. Let's continue in silence.
Thank you, Shumataji, for giving us this opportunity, opportunity to meditate collectively. Thank you for the love, compassion and care you give each of us every single day. Thank you, Shumataji, for everything. We'll say the third verse of the three great mantras. Om Tvame Sakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Sahasrara Swamini Moksha Pradayini Mataji Shri Nimala Devi Namu Namaha Let's all humbly bow down together, raise our kundalini and put ourselves into bandhan. Thank you all for joining this morning. May you and your loved ones have a merry, merry Christmas with many blessings, lots of joy and laughter. Please enjoy this wonderful rendition of a very famous Christmas carol performed by Stephen Day, Indra Deep Ghosh and Subir Adhikari 
at the LA Sahaj Yoga Meditation Center in California. Merry Christmas everyone. Christmas, everybody. <laughs>